Some people say that eating grains causes inflammation in our body. In fact, this is a big reason why some diets like keto and paleo diets promote cutting out grains entirely. But what does the actual science say? Today I'll be going over high quality, peer reviewed research on whether whole grains and refined grains are inflammatory. Hey there, I'm Mish and I'm a full-time researcher with my PhD. And by day I conduct and publish experiments of my own. And by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And in today's episode, I will be weighing the evidence on whether grains cause inflammation in our bodies. And first I'll talk about whole grains, and then I will get into refined grains. And the reason inflammation is important to think about is because we really, really do not want to be inflamed. Most chronic illnesses have inflammation involved in some way or another. And the way that researchers determine if a food is causing us inflammation is to look at biomarkers of inflammatory activity in our bodies. And the main two biomarkers that are focused in these types of studies are C-reactive protein and interleukin-6. And you've probably heard of C-reactive protein or CRP if you've ever had a blood test for anything inflammatory, because high levels of CRP are predictive of inflammatory illnesses like arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease and infections. So it's non-specific, but it says that our body is very inflamed for some reason or another. And first I'll be talking about two meta-analyses on how whole grains affect inflammation. And meta-analyses are the gold standard of studies because they take a bunch of smaller studies and then do a big analysis on all of them to see what the real effect is across all these studies, essentially. And what these meta-analyses both found is that swapping out refined grains in your diet with whole grains reduces inflammation in terms of both CRP and IL-6, or interleukin-6. And other studies have found that replacing refined grains in your diet with whole grains instead improves blood pressure, causes fat loss without a reduction in calories, and also is good for diabetes, among a bunch of other good things. But this probably is not surprising to you if you are interested in nutrition research because we have known this for a long time that whole grains are better than refined grains. But what does this mean? Does it mean that whole grains are good or does it just mean that refined grains are really bad and whole grains aren't as bad? So you get an improvement when you switch to whole grains. This is similar to the logical fallacy I talked about when it comes to all the purported health benefits of olive oil a couple videos ago, where if you compare olive oil to saturated fat, which is bad for us, and find that olive oil is better, we don't know if that means that olive oil is just less bad or if it's actively good for us compared to a no-fat baseline or something like that. So this is just another example of how much the control group matters in studies, because ultimately when we get effects in these types of studies where you're comparing one thing to another, all we're looking at is the difference between those two things. That's all the information we're getting out of the study. So what researchers choose for their control group is extremely important because almost none of the studies on whole grains actually tell us if whole grains are good for us besides just as a replacement for refined grains. And what was especially frustrating about doing the research for this topic was that I did find some studies showing that adding whole grains to your diet compared to being told to avoid whole grains did have good effects on health and inflammation. But unfortunately, those studies were funded by General Mills, so that's all the airtime they're going to get because I don't think we can really trust them, unfortunately. But in good news, we can find some clues on how whole grains affect inflammation directly by looking at correlational studies that have controlled for the typical things that confound the correlational study of whole grains. And I found some high-quality correlational studies on whole grains and inflammation controlling for a ton of other healthy lifestyle type variables. So I'm going to read off the list here for you. These studies controlled for sex, ethnicity, smoking status, total daily energy intake, total estimated energy expenditure, alcohol consumption, fruit intake, vegetable intake, saturated fat intake, polyunsaturated fat intake, oleic acid, waist circumference, and glucose tolerance. So these studies looked at how whole grains predict inflammation controlling for all these other variables of a healthy lifestyle. So if we get an effect, it's not just because people are overall living healthier lives, most likely. And what they found is that whole grains predict lower inflammation. So just like those meta-analyses, but this time looking at whole grains on their own, instead of just compared to refined grains, does corroborate the evidence that whole grains are actively reducing inflammation, potentially. And these studies also found that refined grains don't predict inflammation at all. So to answer the question of whether whole grains are good or refined grains are just really bad and whole grains are slightly less bad, these studies suggest that whole grains are actively reducing inflammation and refined grains are kind of neutral, so not really doing much one way or the other. 
And these findings apply to all grains just lumped into one category, but if you are interested in gluten specifically and whether gluten is bad for us and if gluten sensitivity is real, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date because next week's episode will be on gluten and the things I just said. <laughs> now the evidence overall indicates that whole grains are anti-inflammatory and actively reduce our inflammation, whereas refined grains are more neutral and don't really have an effect. But of course, I don't doubt that a lot of you out there have grain allergies because they are fairly common allergies and therefore eating grains would be increasing your inflammation if you are allergic to grains. So if you think you might be having bad effects from eating grains, then it's definitely worth getting an allergy test. You should definitely go to an allergist, or if you want to test at home, you might be able to get some information on that from at-home food tests. The only one I've ever used or really know of is from Everlywell. I'll put the link below. I'm not affiliated, I've just used them before. So that's the only one I can really vouch for. Of course, I'm still gonna keep my eye out for better studies on this. I really want to see randomized control trials of adding whole grains versus avoiding whole grains in some isocaloric way, not funded by industry. So if that beautiful unicorn of a study comes out, I will make a video on it then, because I am very curious too, to see what those results would be like. I also wanna say thank you so much to the 9,000 and counting of you who have joined the community here over the last few weeks. To say I am blown away is putting it mildly. I am just, it's, it's wild and I'm very grateful, so thank you. <laughs> and I also wanna say thank you to all the new patrons who are supporting me on Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. And I'm very much enjoying finding fun facts to share with you in between videos and giving you video sneak peeks and bonus notes and answering questions and all of that. So if you're interested in getting in on that bonus content or supporting me in making these videos, then head on over to my Patreon, which I'll put up here and below. And you also may have noticed the new black blob in the videos, which I'll talk more about next week, but hopefully my audio quality is better as a result. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it so other people can get this information. And be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you haven't already to stay up to date on all this research. And be sure to check back next week for a video on whether gluten sensitivity is real and whether gluten is bad for us in general. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.